Next up, we have our list of users, and you could totally do a little bit more with these and show a little bit more data. We'll just keep it simple. We'll show the username only. But next, let's open up our user routing. And here, we already created two routes, right? We have our user list component, which that's what this is. And then we also have our component for user single, and that's gonna be slash username. In our case, that'll be right here. So we'll copy this easy Mobius forward slash easy Mobius, and that'll show user single. Now this shows the user single component, but we haven't really done anything with it. We need to grab the route parameter here for username. And then we're going to use the user service to go to the GitHub API and grab this user's information. And then we need to show that in the user single template. So let's go ahead and open up the user single component here. Now let's do a couple placeholders, right? We have to one, grab the username out of the URL. Then two, we need to use the user service to get data from GitHub API. And then we need to bind that to a user variable that we have on our class. And let's do that now. That's the easy part, user. Next, we need to get the user service, so private user service. And notice the import already happened, thanks to VS Code. Now we have the user service, and let's do the call here. So this dot user service dot get user, but we have to pass in a username here. And notice, look how VS Code is helping us out by documenting what we're about to do. We have to get user, and it can look at that user service and say, hey, you want a username, but it has to be a string. So we're gonna put a string in here, and let's do easy Mobius. And I'm just gonna unwrap this ourselves. We're gonna subscribe and we're gonna say user, this dot user is equal to user. And that comment goes up here. All right, so we should have this user. Now we just need to show it. So we're gonna say user and let's pipe it to the JSON pipe. All right, we have easy Mobius here. Our application went ahead and found the user service, found the API call and went to go grab easy Mobius. But this is just a string, right? We are typing this in directly. We have to get this out of the URL. To do that, we're going to use the Angular router, which helps us do these things. So in our constructor, I'm gonna break this out multiple lines. We're gonna add a new dependency called private route, and we're gonna pull the activated route. And that's gonna be the current route that is coming from Angular. And if you're looking for that activated route from at angular slash router. Now, the thing that you'll come to learn from angular is that a lot of the parts of angular are observables. And since they're observables, we have to subscribe to them. We can't just say, uh, let's say const username is equal to this dot route dot params dot username. We can't really do that. And the reason being is if this changes, Angular tries to be very, very performant, so it will reuse a component. So if we are, let's say we are clicking between one user to the next, and the route changes, this won't change because we're not subscribing to the observable. For Angular to be performant, it wants to reuse the component, and that's why this won't change, because we're using the same instance of a component. So we're going to actually subscribe to this.route.params. And let's do this, this.route.params. And see that returns unobservable. Observable right here. So we'll say subscribe. And then we get params out of that. Now we can say const username is equal to params username. And I should have done that as the array right there. But now we have the username. And then we can use this.service here. My formatter's doing some weird formatting for me, but let's take this username and instead of easy Mobius, we'll put that right there. Now we're able to get everything as we expect it to. And then let's even one line this to get a little bit cleaner. All right, so now we have this user service, get user with the username. And once we subscribe to it, we'll pass in this dot user is equal to user. And we bound it to this user property right here. We can easily see we've injected the user service and the activated route. So let's save this. 
We have Easy Mobius. Okay. Now let's, uh, let's zoom out a little bit. Go back to users. Oh, those aren't even links. We need to have links for these. But let's copy this and then paste in defunct. And defunct works as well. That's how our user single component will work. Let's quickly clean up our template right here. We're just going to start with a section class section. And then we'll have a container inside of that. Div class card. And we only want to show this if we have a user. Now we want to have an image. Now what's the source going to be? Source is going to come out of here and, oh, look, we already have avatar URL out of this object. So we're going to say user dot avatar underscore URL. And the way that this works is if you want to bind to an attribute, you use the brackets. And I know we talked about it a little bit, but there's actually three different template things that Angular gives us. And let's uh, go over them real quick. We're going to have property bindings, which is the brackets. And that's if you want to get data from a class into your template. And that's what we're doing here. We have something that we want to bind into the template. You have event bindings, which is the parentheses. And we saw that on the form submit. So that's if you want to listen for events on the template. And then you want to pass data from the template into your class. So that's one way data bound here. And then that's one way data bound here. And then you also have the star, which is the structural directive. If you want to update your HTML based on your variables and different properties. Now these three template binding things are actually good enough to get you going with Angular. And I think it's really helpful to see because these property bindings go from class to template. These event bindings go from template to class. Structural directives change the HTML around. And that's why when we did our forms, uh-oh, that's why when we did our forms, you saw the double ng model because it does both ways. It does two-way data binding, one from the template to the class one from the class to the template. So that's just a little crash course on Angular's templates. All right, where were we? We bound to the source, okay? And then also we are going to use h2 user.login. And that's the final part of our templates is the interpolation. And that's just, if you wanna show text, you use the double curly braces. So save that and we have defunct and we have the user profile there. So if we go open this up, users, Oh, those aren't clickable yet. Let's make that clickable real quick. User list component. We want this card to be, I don't know, let's make their name clickable. So we'll say a router link is equal to slash users slash user dot login. And now it is a link with user slash their username. So you notice they are all clickable. Van Pelt, cool, users, users. All right, so now we have routed to two different sections. We are able to use the ng on init and the user service to get data. And we're able to show that data with our templates. I wanna take a step back now and let's talk about the foundations of Angular. And I'll, we'll just have, instead of slides, we're gonna do this right in our editor. So the way that Angular works is it has a couple different concepts around it. And the first one is going to be modules. Now modules are gonna be the way that we can organize parts of our Angular applications into sections. And if we open up app module and zoom out, since that is giant, let's zoom out a little, okay. Now what happens here is we have our imports, our ES6 imports. And you'll see a lot of ES6 imports in Angular. You'll see it a lot in React. That's just the way that the JavaScript world is moving. And I really like the import statements because instead of just trying to grab things globally, like if you're using jQuery, you just use dollar sign and maybe you didn't load the jQuery library yet, dollar sign wouldn't work. But here we'll know exactly what we're using. Now declarations, we're using app component. Imports are the modules we're importing. Providers are services. And Bootstrap is what's going to start our application. So I know that sounds like a lot, but really an ng module, and this is what's called a decorator. And a decorator is a way we can add extra metadata to this class. So instead of configuring all this stuff inside the class, we can say declarations here. 
we're just adding a decorator here. So this kind of tells this class what it's going to be using. So we have our main app module, and this is where we're going to register everything for this main part of our application. Now, the cool thing is, is you noticed that when we did our demo, the user section was lazy loaded. We told the user section, hey, load this users module, which we'll create in a later lesson. And that's how lazy loading works. These modules help Angular to know what sections are what in our application. So if we want to use something, just remember to register it in a module, and then our Angular will know that it exists and know how to use it. Let's step forward into our component. And here is our component template right here. And actually, let's show this off. We're going to open up our, well, let's exit out of this. And I want to use the built-in VS Code terminal. Now, my Angular site, the way that we run an Angular application, if you're using the Angular CLI, is ng serve. Now the Angular CLI went and served our application. It built out five files, inline, main, polyfills, styles, and vendor. And then we can go over to our Chrome localhost 4200 is where our Angular app gets started. And here is our main app component. You can see welcome to app. Let's split this out to the right. We'll split this out to the left, close that, close this. And the cool thing about the Angular CLI, as soon as we save any files, it will automatically update the browser. So this is our full template, and this is a lot of stuff here. We're not even gonna need this. Let's delete all of this. And the router outlet is needed. That's where our routes are gonna get output to. And we're gonna say, hello, I am an Angular application. And for fun, let's do an emoji for fire. Save and then watch the right side immediately get updated. So Angular CLI handles all of this for us. It's using Webpack under the web. It's using Webpack Dev Server to do all of this hot reloading and fun stuff. So that's what the Angular CLI does for us, right? We start up our application with one line and then we serve it with one line and then we can just start working and it automatically updates. But this is going to be the foundation for an Angular component. We have our component decorator, and then we have our component class and our template. And we'll see how we can build out more components really soon, but components are a really good way to build up our application into modularized parts. And then we'll look at our app routing module, const routes. This is where we're gonna be writing out our routes. And the cool thing about TypeScript if you're not sold on TypeScript. And I wasn't at first, but now I'm a really big fan of TypeScript. Where did that come from? TypeScript, by typing things, it helps you to find errors quickly. And also it self-documents your code. So you know that these, this routes, and you could totally do it without the typings, right? You can say just const routes is equal to, uh, I don't know, let's write in some random path is going to be blank and the component we're gonna use and here, let's talk about component name. We'll say home component. And that'll be something we build, right? But if we don't know what's going on in this routes, okay, path, component name, this probably won't work because it won't work. We would have to go into the Angular documentation, find the routes documentation, and figure out exactly what to call this route, how we would create this route. But since we had routes here and we'll click save angular and typescript can tell us that we're already making errors so if i hover over this it'll say component name is not assignable to a route oh okay well let's try a component okay so we'll delete that component is now normal no errors there if we go to home component cannot find name home component so this TypeScript is really, really good at finding errors for us before we actually go to our browser and have to inspect element over there. So if we do this and I start typing, let's delete that. If I start typing in component, Angular and TypeScript already know, hey, do you wanna use components? So this is what we call self-documenting and the typings from TypeScript help us build faster. So we'll say, okay, I want component, home component, and we haven't defined that yet, but 
that's kind of the idea behind TypeScript is by using types and saying, oh, this is going to be of type routes, this array, it helps us to build faster because our documentation is right in our editor. So that's the routing module. And then notice we have the router module. We're exporting the routing module. And if we go back to, I don't, do I need to save that? Yeah, I do need to save that. So let's save this, close that, close a couple more things. And let's go back into app module. Notice that our app routing module is here. So this ng module, this main app module is where we register everything and we'll see that soon. So this is kind of the foundation of an Angular application. You have modules, you have components, and all of those get put together to build out our app. 